All right, folks, welcome back to the beautiful Peachland, North Carolina. What we're doing today, we're cutting a massive white oak log. When I say massive, this thing is 16 foot long. I'm gonna show you the measurements on the butt end here in a little bit. But right now, we gotta figure out if we can cut it. Now on our cook sawmill, we can cut between the guides. You see right there is 30 inches. Now I got a little bolt right there that I, you know, use a measure off of, but I don't like to say, hey, 30 inches is the max. I like to say around 28. That gives me a little bit of, a little bit of room there for air. Because the last thing you want to do is when you're cutting, you want to hit your roller guides on the log or whatnot. You see what this, the throat on this mill is? We're about to take you over here to this big white oak log we got, and we're going to show you what we're going to do to cut it. So y'all hang on. All right, so this is the white oak log we're cutting today. This thing is massive. I say it's got a little hole in the middle of it. We'll lose a few boards there, but you see the measurement on it right there. That's 36 inches. That ain't gonna really go through our mill. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the chainsaw, we're gonna cut this little knob off of it right here. Maybe trim this up a little bit right here, depending on how it cuts. That way it'll set just a little bit flatter. So we're gonna get out the old trusty 029. Had this chainsaw for 20 something years. Crank up on the first pull most of the time. So now we got this thing kind of trimmed down a little bit. That don't look like much, but folks, that's, that's a couple inches on each side. That's gonna make a world of difference when we go to mill this bad boy. If you notice, we got paint on the end of this thing. Logs that we get that we're gonna drive, we try to paint them like this. This holds the end grain on the boards together, keeps uh, checking from happening when we dry. So just gonna show you a little bit about this. We tried to paint all the logs that came in on this order, but some of them are already cracked so bad that it wasn't worth painting. So. Most time when you paint this, you want to anchor seal them right after you cut them. It keeps that grain together. We anchor sealed all that walnut, the eight quarter walnut that we're drying. Y'all can check up in the top right corner for the previous videos on that. It's a very informative video on kiln drying. So y'all hang on, we're going to show you another log. Might be a, a good tip for people that's in the sawmilling business. All right, so folks, another thing we noticed on these white oak logs, we're getting ready to cut this one today as well. You see all this black in here. Now that ain't from something burning it. What that is, is a piece of metal in this log. Now you see this hump that's in this log. It's kind of like a knot. It tells me that that nail's probably up in this area because you can tell something happened in this tree when it was growing. It wouldn't have this hump on it for no reason. Anytime you have a knot or anything like that on a log, most of the time you got a limb sticking out. So we got this hump right here. Oh, we found it right there. Look at there, found some bob wire right there. That's, that's what we after. So probably we just gonna start right here cut it and see if that clears, so y'all hang on. Do nothing with that. Folks, so y'all see that little piece of barbed wire? Sometimes that's hard to see on the log. You try to look at all of them when you're getting ready to cut, but if y'all see that, y'all know that there's some metal in that. It's pretty obvious on hardwood, so y'all, while you're out there saw milling, check at the end of your logs, make sure you ain't got no metal in it. Satisfaction without the fight. A man has limits, also they say. 
What's a mind I paid my dues? I dare you to walk a mile in these shoes. The beat in my soul just keeps getting louder. Give me some of that. about to kill my battery. We'll fall. 
की Folks, just wanted to mention to you a little bit about this Makita chop saw. We got this thing set up at the end of our mill for chopping up stickers and trimming the ends of boards or whatnot. It's a compound saw. What we like about it is this table. This thing's battery powered. It takes two batteries out here, two 18 volt batteries. The reason we went battery powered is so we can move it around all out here at the sawmill. Sometimes we want it over on the other side. Sometimes we want it here. But basically we like the battery powered because I hate to say it, I'm clumsy. I'll trip over a dang cord in a minute and I can't stand cords being sitting around on the floor. So we went with this just so we can move it around and not have to worry about a cord all the time. If you're interested in one, I highly recommend this Makita. We had a Milwaukee before this one. Not saying nothing bad about Milwaukee, but we wore the thing slap out. It couldn't hold up to the load and the demand that we was putting on it. And this bad boy right here is built way better. Heavy though. If you're thinking about picking it up and moving around the job site, you're definitely going to need two people. So. Just wanted to mention a little something to you about it. Dear mama, something's wrong. It's cold for a summer night. I feel there's something far beyond what is in my sight. I don't know if we're safe here. I don't think we should stay here Dear mama, something's wrong It's cold for a summer night There must be something in the water That's making us